you're already in this tight space where thematically you said, I want this to be fun, okay? But as soon as it starts to go towards the event or any of these other things, it gets really, really tight. You get really shut down. It's like, when I coach people, we talk about the posture of struggle and the posture of dis-ease or the posture of depression and anxiety is like this. It's like we go into this tuck and we cover our vital organs and we think we're keeping ourselves safe, but really we're stunting our growth. We're not, we're not, this would be the opposite of what I say we're shooting for is to bloom, which means we go like this. We start letting go of our fingers and we open up and then we go like this and then we go like this. And that's a blooming flower. That's what I want to meet the people with in Dallas. Like I, that's what I want. Because and anybody just, can go up I there want, and do. I want to help them. But anybody can go up there and do this cut and dry, dry being the key word, mm -hmm. where there's no energy. It's like okay, here's one of thirty talks we're doing. It's like, and I'm not that person. I'm the person that wants to go. Hey, like. Let's do this. Let's re this. I don't want this to be like any other movement. I want this to be like this really cool thing where it makes me want to cry. Not where it makes me want to run, yeah. go the other direction. I want to go and embrace people. I want to talk to people. I want to. I want to connect because I think that thematically is really what we're trying to remind people of. Is that because when we go into this mental illness and addiction space? It's all fear-based. It's all this whole idea of like hands off until you perform or act the way I want you to. And it's control and it's just so much pain. It's not, it's not living. It's like managing. Right? And we get into this management mode where we're trying, and that management is like control because we're afraid that whatever's happening in front of us, we can't control, but we should say, I can't control it but I can connect with it, right? I can connect with my kid, I can connect with my mother, brother, sister, lover, I can connect with him, I don't have to fix it. So all about I just get to talk about it. Uh, just about connecting. Yes. And letting people know that they belong, right. and that we belong, and we get yes. to show up the way that we are, right. and that to know that it's okay no matter how we are. That's exactly that right. That we're worthy, and we get to be here. We, I have a right to be here. Remember that thing about I belong? Yeah. That's the scream when we're born. It's not help me, I'm helpless. Or I'm broken or I don't think I can do this. It's like I'm here and I belong and I'm worth it. So that needs to be, it's a paradigm shift because if we can get to the essence of that, then all the other stuff, the list of what is stigma and how to fight it is going to be easier. But if we just put up lists of like here's what stigma is and here's how to fix it. Like a PowerPoint. Right. Like, because everything is like the ten top ten ways to fix stigma. It's like, okay, yeah, that's cool, but 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 the theme here is more about connection. It's more about accepting. It's more about celebrating our strengths, not our weaknesses. It's about not identifying with what's wrong with us, but what's right with us, what's great about us, what's incredible. And why it's okay to ask for help. Yeah, because the incredible part of us... That actually is our responsibility to ask for help. I mean, it's, it's a hard thing to do when you're facing the stigma, which is the projection of thinking that I am less than, so I'm not worth the effort. If I tell somebody they're going to judge me anyway, mm -hmm. right? So why even start the process? And so we want to say, that's why you back up from here's what somebody's told me is wrong with me, here's my diagnosis. You back, you get behind that and you say, yeah, but that's not who I am. That's not who I am. So if I can if I can back up behind and go back to when I was five years old and I had dreams.
the 50s. Yeah. So, we get to reconnect. I don't want to be an astronaut. I want to be a cowboy. I have dreams. I have things I want to be. And somebody says, you're an addict. And you're like, oh, what? You're an alcoholic. You're a schizophrenic. You have bipolar or whatever. And it's all of a sudden, like, that just stops everything. And you have, like, this... Somebody described as a cloak of invisibility. And you almost like cease to exist until you can somehow get control of this or fix yourself. You don't have to do that because you're not broken. That five year old kid who had these dreams is not gone. We're doing this for a reason, It's so fundamental. We're just so bogged down in all the noise about what's wrong with people and how to fix it. And that noise is so loud that we can't remember who we are. 